So we're going to have a quick look at a video here just to help you understand what goes on in terms of the electrolysis now of dilute sulfuric acid. Now, up until now in another video that we looked at, you had uh, carried out electrolysis of what we call molten ionic compounds and predicting the products of those and the half equations and the observations at the anode and cathode was relatively straightforward. So for example, if it was lithium chloride, which was the molten ionic compound, you simply got lithium chlorine, so you got your metal forming at the cathode, which was silver globules, and your chlorine gas at the anode, which was a pale green gas. Likewise, if it was lead bromide, you got lead and bromine, very simple. So again, at the cathode, you got silver globules, whereas at the anode, you got your bromine, which is a browny orange gas with a very pungent bleachy smell coming off it. So that was, that was pretty straightforward. The complication now with the electrolysis of dilute or aqueous solutions is that we also have water coming into the equation and that complicates things a little bit and we need to know how to deal with that. So if we look first of all at what we've got here uh, whenever we carry the electrolysis of dilute sulfuric acid. The dilute sulfuric acid itself will ionize into hydrogen ions and sulfate ions. And the water, when I pass the electricity through it, will also split up into hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions. So whereas up here in the molten ionic compounds we just had one positive ion and one negative ion, so it was really very easy to decide what was made at the cathode and what was made at the anode. Down here now we've got two different types of negative ion and just one type of positive ion. So working out what's made at the, the cathode, okay, or where the, dis, the positive ions are discharged is really very easy. This, not quite so easy, but there is a very simple rule that you will follow in order to uh, be able to decide what goes on. So if we look at the cathode here, okay, well, the cathode is the one that attract, is the negative electrode and will attract, of course, positive ions. So the only positive ions in here are hydrogen ions, of course. Now, if there were other positive ions, okay, and mm -hmm. um, we would need to be a little bit careful as to what was discharged. And the, the rule very simply is that if you use your reactivity series, which you have to know, anything above hydrogen in the reactivity series, okay, so let, for example, if I had a potassium ion or a magnesium ion in there, okay, anything above it will, is not discharged. Okay, anything below hydrogen is discharged. Preferentially over hydrogen. So if I have something in there like that is more reactive than hydrogen, so potassium as I said, or magnesium, and I have hydrogen ions in there, the hydrogen ion gets discharged. If I have anything below hydrogen ions, that's a positive ion in my solution. So for example, um, iron or uh, copper or silver, then those things would get discharged preferentially over the hydrogen. It's pretty straightforward here because we only have hydrogen as our positive ion, so we don't have any competition coming from uh, ions above it or below it in the reactivity series. So, this is a very simple uh, to work out what happens at the cathode is that we get two of our hydrogen ions go there they will pick up two electrons from that negative cathode and we will get of course the element which is our hydrogen gas now with at the anode then things not quite so straightforward obviously but still not too bad this time the rule is quite simple if we have a halide present in the solution, which we don't here, the halide always gets discharged over the hydroxide. If we have a nitrate or a sulfate, which we do have here, then it's the hydroxide ion that will get discharged. So going on that basis, what we have here is a hydroxide and a sulfate. If we look over here, we have a hydroxide and a sulfate. So when I have a hydroxide, I will of course get my hydroxide ion discharged. Okay. Now, that was the next question. Then, really, is well, what is it discharged? So what do I actually get at my anode? Right. Well, I will get some uh, oxygen gas. Okay. Okay, and that comes from 
my hydroxide ions, I need I have four of those to balance this out. Okay, sorry, let's put that there. I get two waters as a product of that. My oxygen gas, and I will get four electrons. Now that four electrons is important. So there we go. In the electrolysis of dilute sulfuric acid, I will get hydrogen gas and I will get oxygen gas. Now they are made in a ratio of two to one. And it'd be interesting to see if you could pause the video now, maybe, and work out just what is the reason for those being made in a two to one ratio. Okay. Well, if you look at it, if we look at the number of electrons that are given up in each of these, and we remember that if you are something is gaining electrons, okay, so this is gaining electrons, which is reduction. This is losing electrons, which is oxidation. Of course, the whole thing, as we would imagine, is a redox reaction. This one, the hydrogen ions, are picking up two electrons at our cathode. But the, ox but the hydroxide ions are depositing four. So the number of electrons that are lost and gained always have to be equal. So therefore, every time we get one oxygen molecule here, we lose four electrons. So those four electrons have to come over and be gained by the amount of hydrogen that is being reduced. So therefore, what we could really write is four of those plus four E minus goes to H2, but we need twice as much H2. And if we combine these two, elect these two um, reactions together then, what you will find is you have four H pluses and four OH minuses which have come from the water. Okay, so we'll, we'll just we'll four H plus and four OH minuses. Okay, they will give me <coughs> Excuse me. They will give me, in this instance, uh, two hydrogen molecules. They will give me two water molecules, and I will get one molecule of oxygen. Now I don't put the electrons in because I have four electrons on the left, and I've got four electrons on the right. So technically speaking, the electrons will, of course, cancel each other out. Now these really are from the water okay so what we can say is we have four h two o there to give me two h two plus two h two o plus o two now it is very bad practice in chemistry to have the same thing on the left of an equation and on the right of the equation we really only show net changes so if we look here we have water here and we have water here we have two of them here and four of them there so what we do is we get rid of those two and we just account for changing two of them there. <coughs> okay, so the overall equation in this reaction is two waters gives me two moles of hydrogen gas and one mole of oxygen gas. So when you carry this experiment out, you should get volumes of hydrogen to oxygen uh, in a two to one ratio of hydrogen to oxygen. Okay, so that's kind of all the chemistry that's going on in there, and that's how we decide, guys, whether if I have two different positive ions, which I don't have here, but if I have two different positive ions, if it is more reactive than hydrogen in the reactivity series, hydrogen gets displaced. If it's less reactive than hydrogen in the reactivity series, then that other particle gets displaced, silver, copper, etc. Whereas the rule at the, uh, at the anode is slightly different in that if we have a halide present, the halide gets displaced, displaced so if I have chlorine, bromine, iodine, they will get to space, whereas if I have a sulfate or a nitrate, they're very, very stable, and it's the hydroxide which gets displaced, forming oxygen instead. So if we have a look at the, the sort of the, the way that we would carry this experiment out, so we've got this little diagram here, and this is a diagram that you will need to know and you need to be able to draw it, and most importantly, label it. <coughs> so you'll see here we have our negative side, we've correlated our negative side to the hydrogen, so this is our cathode, electrode and that's correlated to the hydrogen and over here we have our positive electrode which is our anode and that's to the oxygen. We see in our diagram we have twice as much hydrogen being produced here as oxygen roughly. Okay and again yeah that is a diagram that you will of course need to be able to to explain. Okay I think that's pretty much it guys. Um, 
that should cover all aspects of the electrolysis of dilute sulfuric acid. So the only complication is now the presence of water, although it really only introduces one extra ion. And provided you've either learnt all the equations or you, and you know the rule as to which ions are or are not uh, discharged at those electrodes, you should be fine. Okay, thank you.